The chap you've just observed is named Rupert. Rupert is your typical aristocratic offspring. Very glorious and newly entered in the world of business. He strives with a swagger of a man who has never encountered anything his wallet or wit can obliterate. Privilege would be an understatement when describing Rupert. Educated at Fetters Academy with a classics degree from St Andrews, he's a prime example of what a premier Edinburgh education can make you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I must admit, your proposition is fascinating. Thank your you. commitment to your staff is commendable. And also, the commitment to your journalistic integrity is something that cannot be understated. But something about your operation lacks a certain je ne sais quoi. Well, we're open to suggestions, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, we are not a large publication. We simply don't have the resources or manpower to make the changes that you're asking for. But we do believe in our establishment and we're open to making some changes to make things work. Changes is an understatement. You need to think bigger. Less local, if you want to be pulling the wallet of Moore Investments. Because if it's not making money, I do not wish to be involved. And who's going to be funding this expansion of yours? Who's going to be coordinating it? Is it going to be you, Mr. Mr. Moore, was it? Well, I think you've got to understand that we're going under here. We're struggling to stay afloat at the moment. We have staff that depend on us, that need us. I mean, I, I think... 20% of 50,000, which is what we're offering you, is more than enough to cover it. The offer from a hard done by editors was indeed generous. The Captain Press was a renowned historic Edinburgh publication. Any normal person would gladly take a stake in the paper, however not Rupert Moore. Rupert Moore is a man consumed by growing his already vast fortune. He dreamed of a Monte Carlo villa filled with Fabergé eggs and other such pomp. He, much to the despair of the editors of the Colton Press, was not motivated by emotions such as humility and empathy. My good sir, I admire your candour. It's as refreshing as the summer breeze, truly. However, your proposal is just in a different trajectory from ours. What do you mean, doesn't align? All we're asking for is a lifeline for our staff. Ah yes, the human element. Always needs to be in consideration, of course. But in the grand tapestry of commerce, sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. And I'm sure your talented team, talented team, will find opportunities elsewhere. Now Rupert Moore had not been previously unaware of the Carlton Press. Around ten years ago, a journalist by the name of George Stevenson had taken up employment there. It was around this time that Rupert's father's business, the very one at which Rupert was now employed, had made what seemed like a routine investment. The investment was in a restaurant 
they were grand company old bistro. The restaurant, despite its unfortunate name, began to garner a loyal clientele. However, Mr Moore Senior loved one thing above all else, that of course being money. I've always had a passion for the restaurant business. So when the owner of the Cumbernauld Bistro reached out, it made sense to me. This is because I have a boatload of money. Ah, my esteemed benefactor, your presence here is like the final piece in a complex puzzle of delightful gastronomy and ambience. Well, it has been said that I have that effect on the places that I patron. Without the knowledge of the two owners here, I had received several inquiries from developer friends of mine to seize their land. One of them offered a very significant amount of money for me to sign the land over to them. So in the very, very small print of the clause, I hid a detail signing the declaration of the land over to me. Mr. Moore, we are, we're devastated by this request. Devastated. I'm devastated. The former owners of the restaurant contacted a Mr. George Stevenson, who so happened to be employed at the Carlton Press. George Stevenson was a particular type of man. Journalism was his life and he was uncorruptible. Mr. Moore Sr. had offered him a six-figure sum to not publish the piece detailing what he did to the Grand Company Old Bistro which he turned down. As a result, Mr Moore Senior was alienated from the world of business, leaving him unable to grow his already vast fortune. Rupert's entanglement with the Carlton Press was no coincidence. The article by George Stevenson had left the family name somewhat besmirched. Due to this, Rupert had some of a familial vendetta against the Carlton Press and George Stevenson. Hello, it's me. I'm considering making an investment on the condition that you allow me to shadow a journalist. Wonderful. I'll be there at nine. Don't be late. Ah, welcome back, Mr. Mo. Is George, you'll be shadowing him today. Mr. Moore, George, George, Mr. Moore. As luck would have it, the editors of the paper put me with George Stevenson, the unctuous snollygoster who vilified my family. This was an opportunity to figure out what makes him tick. Sounds good. Let's go. This Rupert is Percy. He's a very passionate pigeon advocate. And he's very upset about poop or something like that. So he's a journalist. George Stevenson. Out the press. The pigeons, man. How are they supposed to survive? The council cleaning up their feces. It's disrupting their way of life. And how would you propose to rectify this issue? Let the pigeons live, man. Oh, I dream of a world where pigeons and humans can live together. Mmm, oh god, I love pigeons. Right, and what does it have to do with the fecal matter? I don't know. I mean, it's their business. I mean, at the end of the day, it's their world and we're just living in it. Whose business? Well, the pigeons, of course. Well, thank you very much for your time. Please, mate, you have to listen. We erased this. It's like they were never here. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of their existence. A symbol? Yes, a symbol. It's like the cherry blossoms in Japan or the autumn leaves in Vermont. The rest of the day continued in similar fashion with such characters such as Jimmy the Jetpack Juggler, Larry the Lava Whisperer, and well, you get the idea. 
Rupert came to the conclusion that George was simply your typical journalist, looking to write about the weird and wonderful. It was a shame, really, that Rupert was committed to retribution. After agreeing to invest, he went about the process of dismantling the newspaper from within. Ah, Rupert, perhaps you'd be able to tell me why a group called the Open Evening Advocacy Union has, you know, bought the whole building here? Well, I was meaning to talk to you about that. Yeah, well, we're actually a newsroom, you know? I always supposed to report on any news without an actual newsroom to report in. Well, precisely. And what's that supposed to mean exactly? You're a newspaper. You can't possibly function without a newsroom. What? How do you mean? You have disrespected the Moore family name. Does Moore not mean anything to you? You know, my father, he may or may not have shut down a small independent family business for his financial profit, but who hasn't? So I've decided to close down your newspaper. Anyways, see you later. What the fuck? Yeah, and how about this as well? You, you stuck up at this point. And that brings our tale to a rather abrupt close. Rupert Moore, purely out of self-interest, closed down a historic paper without any regard for any person out with his own self-obsession. There is no happy ending, purely the bitter, unfortunate reality that shit happens. Thank you.